Okay, yeah, it's a deep one. Okay. All right, so, the, you know, as one evolves through the levels of consciousness, um, you know, from the, say, some of the lower levels of consciousness, being in fear non-stop and judgmentalism and right and wrong and wanting revenge or vi a victim perpetrator, you know, this is the innocent person, this is the bad person. Uh, so this very idealistic, this very fear-based, this good and bad, as one starts to do the spiritual work. Now, here's one of these things. Um, uh, you know, and also this idea that if you're in a non-dual state, well, if you're, you know, I'm in a non-dual state, so I can just go around axe murdering people. And, uh, but hey, it's an illusion, isn't it? So there isn't, and God, God forgives everything, so it's okay. Um, uh, so that was a bit tongue-in-cheek, but there you go. Uh, and, uh, okay, so here's the thing, and I love what Hawkins said about it, the, the difference between relativism and absolute, and the absolute, you know, and the levels of consciousness. The levels of consciousness through muscle testing are levels based on that there is an absolute. I mean, not that there, I mean, there is an absolute, I mean, it's not even that, there is an absolute as an intellectual construct. There is an absolute truth to the universe. And that on that level of truth, uh, you can then, you can then get, uh, you can use muscle testing to see how much truth in relationship to the absolute, and the absolute is at level infinity. Um, I would say, you know, the absolute, um, the absolute, um, <clears throat> absolute love, light, and power of the di divine. So there is such a thing, and here where the relativists get a lot of trouble. That well, if, if I make a scale, everything is just arbitrary all the time. There is no such thing as an absolute scale. So. Now, when I'm, uh, I'll try and talk about me and make it less personal. Like when I was in low levels of consciousness, I was in my active addiction. Uh, I was being run by lots of programs, also being run by the addictive field of not enough and trying to get more and more of everything. Um, the, um, and I would perceive the world through very self-centered motives, what was good for me. And also probably perceive the world through the bad people are the people who'd stop me from getting what I want. And the good people are the ones who help me get what I want. So that would be my very simplistic way, very selfish way of, of perceiving the world. Um, a bit more complicated than that. But as you go to, into... See, here's the thing that happens with different levels of spiritual consciousness. Because... And, it, and the word consciousness is very, very good. Because when I'm in those low levels of consciousness, I have limited consciousness. I mean, my consciousness is just about me. I'm the center of the world, and everything that's good for me is the only thing that's good, and everything that's bad for me is not good. So that's what I call limited consciousness. And you start to do forgiveness work and spiritual work. Um, Hawkins actually described this very uh, lucidly, and, and it, was, it was backed up. And it's also my experience, even though he described it. It was, it was nice. like, when I'm below integrity, when I was in those fields dominated by addiction, dominated by fear, greed, selfishness, um, my awareness, because I'm below integrity, I mean the ego levels of consciousness, is actually I'm only aware of myself. I have not yet developed the spiritual consciousness to be aware of others. I don't know if that makes sense. So as soon as I get to the level of integrity, I, I choose a, a, you know, you know, I choose to work on myself spiritually. I choose to question all my motives. Or I have, I, I'm taken to a rock bottom with my ego, and I now have to choose a spiritual path, whatever it is. And I hit integrity. I start to become aware. I start to have the emergence of consciousness that other people are affected by my actions. You know, like uh, stealing donuts. You know, when I was, if I was stealing donuts um, beforehand, or stealing biscuits beforehand, now. There's a con before it's like, well, I just need those donuts and I'm just going to get those donuts. And there's only me that's important in this world and that's good for me. Whereas now, as I get to integrity, there's now an awareness of others and the effects of my actions on others. So it's the emergence, my level of consciousness, it's a level of truth. And my consciousness level is now I'm starting to get glimmers like, if I go to someone's house and eat all their biscuits when they're not looking, it's like, they're probably going to, you know, tomorrow when they get their cup of tea, 
they're going to be quite upset. You know, I start to have a consciousness and awareness that my actions, it's not just me, it's I actually have an intuitive awareness that others are affected. So I'm getting the first starts of the glimmer of, of a high level content, which is a high level of truth. It's actually based on truth. It's not just something made up. And it's a higher level of consciousness than when I'm the only thing that matters is my own needs. Uh, as you're getting to higher levels, so you do more forgiveness work, you do the Course of Miracles more. You know, I see Christ in you, I see Christ in you, and you're sinless, and you're sinless. I pray for a miracle to see you differently. Uh, you know, you're, you're just as mean as that. You're doing all this spiritual work, feeling my feelings, praying for miracles, left, right, and center. My level of consciousness is going up to a higher level. And so this becomes... You're now starting, you know, remember the ego is like a filter of me being experiencing just a limited self. I don't know if this makes sense. The more I'm engrossed in my thinking in my body, the more I just have an idea that I'm separate and my thinking is based on my separation. But as this starts to dissolve as you're doing more forgiveness work, you're starting to get much more of an intuitive spiritual awareness of, a, of being connected to others and that there isn't you in separation. So you're going up the levels of consciousness now. So below, you know, maybe as I start to hit integrity, it's like I have a consciousness. If I steal this person's biscuits, I'm starting, it's starting to dawn on my consciousness that they may suffer. But it doesn't go much further than that, you know. But then as I do more spiritual work, I start to get this intuitive, this, and also this experience of oneness on a higher level of consciousness. So you could say the, what it's seen from the outside world is my actions and my, uh, and my behavior in the world becomes much more selfless because my tuning into uh, higher levels of consciousness means that there's a greater intuitive connection to greater fields of humanity or even nature or even whatever it is. And so the consciousness level is going higher. So now it's like, oh, it's not, there's more to the world than me and how my biscuit, stealing, my biscuit stealing habit is affecting other people. You're now tapping into greater levels of consciousness and oneness. And so your actions become, and your intuitions, and your experience of being separate from others is dissolving. And therefore your, your orchestration in the world and your belief systems, uh, not belief systems, but you're tuning into these different radio stations. You know, like radio biscuit addiction is very low level <coughs> consciousness. Then, uh, then you have uh, just integrity. But as you're getting there, basically a very a high level, which is still dualistic, uh, which workers would say would be the, the, the level of sainthood, which would be the le you have the un level of unconditional love, where you're trying to love everyone. But then you have, when you, when you dissolve that and you go to even higher levels, you're starting to get going into what I call radio sainthood, which is not really, it's actually a level of the disappearance of separation at a certain level, but it's still dualistic. So then you start to get the more mystical, you, the orchestrations come out at a much more selfless and more in tune with the universal oneness. Uh, when you get to the levels of enlightenment, enlightenment is not like, you know, you're not going to be like Buddha and sort of axe murdering everyone. That's uh, because that would be. Uh, that's a misunderstanding of high level of non-duality because as you're getting to the uh, high levels of non-duality you're also experiencing non-dual fields of, of oneness but that's also imbued with a sense of oneness you know like if you're in a field of oneness and knowing you're not a body at those very high levels of consciousness you're not going to pick up an axe and just chop up another body it's like you know buddha's not going to suddenly yeah. by mistake grab an axe and just chop your head off. <laughs> or, or, how could I be enlightened? It's like, you know, so... <laughs> you know, well, you know, I'm not real, you're not real, we're enlightened, so let's just chop your head off. You know, it's like, there's also a level of spirit, there's this level of spiritual oneness and orchestration, even at the non-dual levels, even though you know the world is not real, there's a level of divinity present in that orchestration. So it's not like like I'm going to become like, Dissociated and pick up an axe and just chopping and say you're not real, I'm not real, uh, so this is not real. That I'm just chopping your head off. Sorry if that was a bit bizarre, but there you go. Um, so um, so yeah, you're also realizing as the ego dissolves, there's a, there's like a oneness that is permeating, and you're starting to get more of an intuition. 
you're getting higher intuitions. The more you dissolve the ego, the greater your intuitions are. You're connecting to the infinite universal oneness. You're tapping into that infinite frame of divinity. So your intuitions, like, actually, rather than just spending my whole life stealing biscuits, maybe I'm going to be, for the first part, as you get to see, you're going to be like, helping other people stop stealing biscuits so they can find God. And then later on, you're, as you're tuning into higher levels, it'll be more like, you know, as you get into it, like I remember Hawkins doing this thing in his Course in Miracles group, which I think would be a very advanced level of consciousness. Like, let's use muscle testing to find which world political leader we should, as a group, pray for and find out which chakra in which group so we can affect the greatest level of peace on this planet. So that's like, you're not going to get those intuitions at very low levels of consciousness. Now your whole intuitions are how to bring the greatest amount of peace and alleviation of suffering for all of, because there's a oneness. You now feel at one with everyone. So these are the, these, and you're tuning in, not from your head, but you're tuning in to the universal oneness to bring love and peace and harmony at those levels. So everything shifts, and those could still be at relatively dualistic but very high, you know, you're starting to dissolve the idea of dualism as you're starting to get to the very high levels of vibration. Does that answer the question? It does. There's a temptation to be a bit controversial, but I don't know, <laughs> I should, I don't know if I should really go there or not. Go for it. Okay. Thanks, Dimitri. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm very really cautious because I'm aware that not everybody's going to share the same perspective. Go. <laughs> if you ask many of the well-known spiritual teachers whether it's okay to eat meat or not, no, okay. most of them will answer, it depends on your level, of what, where you're resonating, what you feel comfortable with, mm. what is healthy for you, but none of them, or very, very rarely, will they ever consider the suffering that the animal may have got been through during that process. Mm. And so there does seem to me a mm. lack of, like I said, I'm trying to be mindful because it's not to be controversial, it's just more about my own mm. thought processes. Mm. There seems to be a lack of integrity where they, either through lack of information or something, they miss part of the puzzle. Now what I found that, I stopped eating meat like 15 years ago, mm. and I went vegan six years ago. Mm. And when I went vegetarian, it was just about diet, and I wasn't hugely strict about it. And I, there was a little bit of, why do people do this? Uh, I, I started to get in touch with this different side of humanity. When I went vegan, it was like, I really got in touch with this disconnect that humanity has towards, because it wasn't just about meat, it was about what I was wearing, it was about animal tested products, it was about the whole commodification and use mm -hmm. rather than not it, it stopped being about how we use animals yes. it became more about the fact that we do and the more I've gone through that the more I've seen this thing or came across this thing where I always give thanks to the animals before I eat them mm -hmm. and a lot of ex what seems to be quite tricky excuse making that wouldn't be applied when if directed towards humans in the same way um, like I said, I was, I'm quite cautious about going there because that was not the intention for today. Mm. But it does seem to me that there is a, there's almost a spiritual, well, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not in the space of judgment. I've just gone above all that. I've transcend, and transcended this and I no longer want to behave in this way. Except when I fancy a sandwich, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different thing. It's, it's. Whereas I do honestly believe that the other beings that we share this planet with do have an interest in their own existence. Hmm. So yeah, that's that. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll give my view on that. Uh, my view is my view and take what you want, leave the rest. It's going to be controversial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. Um, but I have said it before, I mean, I, I, sus I subscribe to Hawkins' view and it's okay, you can disagree with me. Uh, it is going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be very controversial, which is by I'm not saying that you have to agree to, to anything I say, um, uh, but I, I would subscribe to more or less my understanding of what Hawkins said. So in the in the I think it's he's, if I quote him correct in the Rig Vita, it says that when when a life gives its life for a higher purpose, it earns the karmic merit to go to that level. 
the conscious level of that life. Uh, if, I don't know if that makes sense. I'll try, and, I'll try and think. Like if I was to give my sense of life to God, then I would earn the thing to become one with God. Also, uh, that uh, karmically, uh, you know, a, when, a, when an animal, uh, you know, is incarnated and gives its life to a higher purpose, it then gains a lot of karmic merit uh, for, um, for, for, uh, for its next stage in its uh, spiritual process. So it's to sort of see it like there is, um, if, um, if uh, but by, when an animal is, is, you know, even though it can seem, you can see it from a horrible point of view, and I don't really want to get into a big debate on it, but when a, you see, if an animal is sort of incarnated and then it's used as food, um, it also gains a lot, because it's serving uh, uh, a higher purpose in its sacrifice of its life, it's also gaining a lot of karmic merit. Uh, if you check, check that out kinesiologically, you find that's true. When a, a life is sacrificed, you could say it's not intentional, but I think you could say there's a spiritual there's a spiritual reason behind the incarnation, and there is a sacrifice of life which uh, can have a karmic meaning behind it. But in that sacrifice of its life for a higher purpose, uh, you, I mean, there's a lot of room for controversy, but it, it is gaining karmic merit. It may, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it would, it might get, even get the karmic merit to be incarnated as a human on the next stage of its evolution by making that sacrifice. So as, as, and even as one makes a sacrifice, it may, you, know, you could argue that, well, I wasn't consciously making that sacrifice, but I could say sometimes one comes in with, uh, if you like, spiritual contracts, which one isn't consciously aware. And so one is, uh, is uh, taking on an undoing of something to get to a higher level of... Uh, 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 a higher stage of spiritual evolution. I'm trying to phrase this in a certain way, mm -hmm. uh, without getting too many questions. And uh, uh, but so there is uh, um, that is that is case. Sometimes when you go through something, you earn karmic privilege. And with animals, they may even gain karmic privilege to move on to a higher stage in their next lifetime. And also, you know, all the animals that give their lives for food to the humans. Uh, uh, um, I know there's a lot of debating that can happen. There, I would say a lot of the, I would say in my, uh, there, is a, there is a karmic reason and there is a karmic privilege behind that whole, whole thing, even though I can un also understand the vegetarian's point of view. I don't really want to get in this video into a huge debate on it, Particularly, maybe another. Um, another not, I'm actually not too much in disagreement with you. Uh, maybe yeah. another video we can go into. Yeah. Uh, but uh, can we leave it there? Is that okay? Well, or I just want to yeah. add a little bit of an insight of sure. perspective on that. Yeah. Statistically, I'm not, there's no real debate about statistics. There's been 107 billion human beings on this planet since the world came into fruition, mm. and we kill something like 56 billion land animals, not excluding fish, every year. So there's a lot. Um, it's karmically i believe that we are moving evolving at an exponential rate we, the human consciousness is expanding and as a result of that we're seeing in a, a much more well widespread veganism is massive at the moment there's a big spread toward a big movement or a drive towards that and what i also believe that I mean, the question of sacrifice is a very tricky one. Who's sacrificing? Who, how do we really guess the intention? It's just a belief. But I do believe that the animals are coming into this planet and we are becoming more aware of what they're going in order to project us towards that next level. And so that doesn't negate... I don't believe that negates anything you're saying. I don't think it negates anything that I'm saying either. It's just you've got to look at the long-term intentions. When an animal reincarnates or comes back and it goes through the same again in that process of slavery, suffering, torment, or whatever, and then it does it again and again, at some point the human race has to wake up for it. And I do believe that's what's happening. Yeah, no, very, very nice. Yeah. I agree. It's like a spiritual awakening that eventually... Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great question.